The game I'm referring to in the title of this video is Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions. Shattered Dimensions is like the GTA 4 of Spider-Man games. A lot of people have played the game but I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. I decided to go back to Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions in 2021 and found myself to be thinking, man, this, this game is the most underrated Spider-Man game of all time. So here I am, a YouTuber with less than 2,000 subscribers trying to get people to talk about this game more. The story starts with Mysterio trying to rob the Tablet of Order and Chaos from a museum. The Tablet of Order and Chaos is basically a magic MacGuffin with reality bending powers inside of it. To foil this robbery attempt, the Amazing Spider-Man shows up and starts embarrassing Mysterio in the fight. Nah, -uh. souvenirs are available in the gift shop. During the fight, the tablet breaks and its pieces disappear. Now Madam Web shows up and it turns out the tablet has been scattered across four different dimensions. That is ours, Noir, Ultimate, and 2099. And have conveniently landed with different villains. And if the pieces of the tablet are not recovered soon from these wrong hands, it's gonna be a kitten bum cup. Get it? Kitten bum cup? Catastrophe is the yeah yeah and now I get why people don't subscribe to me so yeah that was the basic premise of the story the game basically plays like a cartoon with different missions being different episodes divided across these four dimensions now if you're looking for an emotionally complex story you won't find it here the game is lighthearted but that doesn't mean that there are no genuine moments you are a little on the freakish side but I'm a freak too I mean look at me or that it doesn't get dark call him vulture call him whatever you want I'll always call him the bastard who killed my uncle and not just kill. The voice acting in the game is absolutely marvelous. See what I did there? All four Spider-Men are played by actors who have already played Spider-Man in the past. The amazing Spider-Man, that is the Spider-Man of our dimension, has been voiced by Neil Patrick Harris, who also played Spider-Man in the new animated series. 2099 is voiced by Dan Gilvison, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, and he was Spider-Man in Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Christopher Daniel Barnes, who played Spider-Man in the animated series, who you might be familiar with because of this clip. Shaka! Escape me! I'll chase you to the ends of the earth! He is also in the game and he plays Spider-Man Noir. And last but not least, my personal favorite, Josh Keaton, the person who played Spider-Man in the Spectacular Spider-Man series. Every actor does a great job of portraying their own Spider-Man role, and you can definitely tell that these guys have experience with the Spider-Man mantle in the past. Their lines and jokes feel spot on, and they capture the essence of that talkative nature of Spider-Man perfectly. Stan Lee himself plays the narrator of the game all throughout the story. None other than the master of illusion himself, the menacing Mysterio. All four dimensions of the game have different art style which provide them their unique look. The Amazing Spider-Man or the Spider-Man of our dimension has a very comic -y look. Spider-Man Noir has washed out black and white art style which transitions into warm tones when there needs to be color. 2099 fucking blasts you with its lights, with its cyberpunk neon art style, and Ultimate has a vibrant 3D cartoonish laminated kind of look. And there's also very cool alternate costumes that you can unlock for each Spider-Man separately to spice things up and play as Spider-Man of other dimensions which are not even in the game. These distinct art are the reason this game looks so fucking good even in 2021. Like, it just straight up looks great, but it's not just the visuals. Every Spider-Man has their own moves and gameplay. The Amazing Spider-Man has super spider-like stances and agility with very spidery animations. Is spidery even a word? 2099 is very fast and quick. That's why he can't get a girlfriend. Sorry, where was I? 2099 is very fast and quick. That's why he has a more speedy hack and slash type gameplay. The Ultimate Spider-Man or the Black Suited Spider-Man is extremely powerful and his gameplay is mainly about hard-hitting crowd control with tons of enemies on the screen. And finally, the noir Spider-Man completely switches the game, as his gameplay is more about stealth. The stealth mechanics are obviously inspired by the Arkham games, but cause this is Spider-Man, you can seriously turn enemies into web cocoons or take them down even when you're sticking on walls. But that doesn't mean that Spider-Man noir does not have combat sections. Outside of the combat sections, noir does take more damage than all the other Spider-Man, but he is the only Spider-Man in the game with fully regenerating health, so it balances out. The game consists of light attacks and heavy attacks which you can perform on ground as well as the air. The web strike also returns from Spider-Man Web of Shadows, but it's really different and definitely not as good as that game. You can mix light and heavy attacks even from the beginning of the game to perform some really cool combos, but once you start unlocking combos in the combat upgrade section, my god this game gets ridiculous. There are so many ridiculous moves that you can unlock across all four Spider-Man. As you might have been able to tell till now in the video, the game does not try to be realistic. Instead it goes for fun and a cartoony vibe, and it makes sense the moves look so over the top. Like the moves here are so f***ing cool man. You can transition to a different combo in the middle of a combo that you're already performing to create a different chain of moves to absolutely embarrass the different types of enemies in the game. The funny thing is like we all know Spider-Man doesn't kill so even when you're performing these crazy ass moves during the game and cutscenes the characters will be saying that he knocked the enemy out. Knocked him out? 
Dude, he's seriously fucking dead. But yeah, the combat system here is absolutely spectacular and the best comparison I can make to it is your mom's pussy. It looks awesome and it feels incredible to play with. There's cartoony comic-like effects when you hit someone and just like the visuals, the sound in the game is also in on shitting on realism and being stylish. Hitting enemies in this game sounds... <sighs> Chef's kiss, man. Other than hitting enemies, you're also going to be avoiding their attacks. Spider-Man has a defensive stance where he dodges attacks and bullets like it's the Matrix. Some attacks cannot be dodged, so they need to be evaded manually, and we are not even done. That's what she said. Other than upgrades that build on existing moves, you can also get counter attacks, insane charged attacks, and there's an upgrade which allows you to charge the attacks in the middle of your combos, so even charged attacks can be chained with your combos. Spider-Man 2099 has an accelerated vision special ability which makes everything appear slower and allows you to avoid attacks with no effort, and Ultimate Spider-Man has a rage mode special ability where he goes batshit crazy, or is it spider shit crazy, I don't know, and starts whipping out absolutely obliterated moves. These special abilities and the general stuff like the health bar and health region speed can be upgraded in the other upgrade menu in the game that is character upgrades. The game is just meant to be played on the hard difficulty in my opinion. It provides a really good challenge and emphasizing on avoiding attacks. Web zipping to get out of fights or to reposition also becomes important and the hard difficulty also gives you incentive to perform those crazy ass moves you unlock. The game is divided into different acts with every act containing a mission for each spider-man. The game is linear but the levels are huge so there's a lot of room for swinging around and you are going to be doing a lot of that to traverse around these maps. This game also has that weird type of web swinging in which the webs don't attach to buildings but you still need something around you to web swing. But I get it dude, here it makes more sense to have this kind of system. Cause if the webs in these levels did attach to buildings, that would heavily limit the mobility in a linear game. But yeah, the actual swinging is just alright. It's not bad, it's not good, it's just alright. The swinging kick here is automatic and other than swinging, you can also zip to points as well. The missions in the game are designed with bosses at the center of attention. The game has classic Spider-Man villains like Kraven, Sadman. It also has new takes on classic villains, the Noir Vulture, Hobgoblin 2099, which were specifically created for this game. And there's even a level where Deadpool is the main villain. Here's a fun fact for you kids. This game is the first appearance of the legendary Nolan North as Deadpool. And remember viewers, I'm available for Black Ops missions, assassinations, and birthday parties. And it worked out so well that he even got his own game as Deadpool. Now a few moments ago I mentioned the missions in the game are designed with bosses at the center of attention. What I meant by that is there are multiple boss battles with the main villain of any particular level. And each battle gets tougher than the last and requires different techniques to beat the villains. As it turns out, the tablet starts making villains more powerful. Like some of these battles can evolve into something truly giant in scale. Just like they should, cause remember, this time it's not just a neighborhood or or New York. Literally the fate of multiple realities stands on the shoulders of these Spider-Men. The game has this relentless pacing and it always keeps you going. Like there is not a single dull moment here as no mission overstays its welcome to increase playtime for no apparent reason. You're constantly fighting enemies, chasing the main villain of the level, or engaging in epic set pieces and my god some of the set pieces here are just like your mom absolutely bonkers. Here I am trying to save myself from a tsunami by swinging towards it to reach a platform. And how does the tsunami happen? Well, Deadpool detonated bombs underwater to increase the stakes for the show he runs in the game. That is such a Deadpool thing to do. There are also many moments in the game where you have to save people, cause don't forget, you're still Spider-Man. And a lot of times when you save people, they help you in return in some way, shape or form and that just gives a friendly neighborhood vibe to this game. And it just feels right in the case of Spider-Man, man. Spider-Man, man? Spider-Man Spider Shattered Dimensions is in no way a perfect game. It is far from it. But what it definitely is, is an extremely unique superhero game and a very fun game in general. This game was mine and many other people's first introduction to the Spider-Verse. And I'm just really happy for the fact that when I revisited Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions in 2021, it turned out to be even better than I remember. And yeah, that's it for this video, everyone. I have been recording this video for 55 minutes now. Editing this video is gonna be an absolute bit. So if you enjoyed this video at any point, please be sure to like it, share it around, and subscribe to the channel for more quality content. And to all of you web-spinning wonders, I proudly say, Excelsior!